It was entirely natural that early man should think of his home, our Earth, as being a fixed and rigid body in the center of the universe. It was thus remarkable that Copernicus and Galileo should have suggested that the Earth was not the center of the universe, but that it was just one planet among many moving around one star among many. But they did not go far enough when they suggested that the Earth was merely a planet moving in space. They should also have thought that the inside of the Earth might be moving as well, because there are volcanoes and there are earthquakes, which show that the Earth is hot inside and is moving about, although only rather slowly. Now, this idea occurred to people when they noticed that the two sides of the Atlantic Ocean were parallel with one another. But men could not believe that the solid continents made out of rock could move through the solid ocean floors. So there's an impasse, and it took some time to understand how it was that continents might move about. In 1912, Alfred Wegener suggested that about a hundred million years ago, there had been only one supercontinent, which began gradually to break up, as we show here. Wegener argued that if the Earth can move vertically, the continents might move laterally. When lava cools to rock, magnetite, one of the minerals inside, becomes magnetized in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field, Magnetite retains that magnetism as a permanent memory of the direction of the Earth's magnetic field at the time and place that the lava solidified. It is now known that the Earth, like the Sun, reverses its magnetic polarity at intervals of geological time. Every few hundred thousand years, the two magnetic poles die away and start up again in reverse position. With the aid of magnetic compasses or magnetometers, extensive studies of volcanic flow have been conducted and the ages of volcanoes recorded. Based on these studies, a time scale can be built up showing in gray the normally directed layers and in white those layers that have been reversed. This time scale has been worked out for a period of four million years and shows at least nine reversals during this time. Each color represents a period of one million years. The results of many studies in different parts of the world show that these events were global in extent. The magnetic field has been measured over the ocean floors. For example, the North Atlantic was studied just south of Iceland, over the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Ships and planes equipped with magnetometers were used to measure horizontally the magnetic field on both sides of the ocean ridge. They built up a zebra-like pattern, shown here in gray for the normal and white for the reverse layers, which corresponds to the grays and whites seen in the vertical volcanic patterns. This pattern spans the ocean floor, parallel to the mid-ocean ridge, for hundreds and thousands of miles. It displays a striking symmetry from one side of the ridge to the other. The ratio of distance from the center of the ridge is the same as the time ratio of successive reversals in the vertical piles of the volcanic flows. It is possible to show that polarity patterns are symmetrical in relation to the ocean ridge. And by applying a scale in which each color represents a million years, we find that the ages of the volcanics are also symmetrical. The mid-ocean ridges extend through all the oceans of the world, from the Arctic through Iceland, past the Azores, where a branch goes over to Gibraltar, 
and then down the South Atlantic Ocean, halfway between Africa and South America, and turning, halfway between Africa and Antarctica, into the Indian Ocean. Here the system branches. One branch goes north along the Carlsberg Ridge to the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea, and another branch turns south, halfway between Australia and Antarctica, to enter the Pacific Ocean, where it is called the East Pacific Rise. The rate of spreading in this region is as much as a total of 12 centimeters, about 5 inches a year. Together, the ocean ridges represent the greatest mountain system on Earth, with a total length of about 40,000 miles. This mountain system is generally several hundred miles wide and up to 10,000 feet high. After crossing the Pacific, the East Pacific Rise enters the Gulf of California and turns into the St. Andreas Fault, along which, in California, serious earthquakes occur frequently. The ocean ridges mark the sites where ancient land masses broke up. As the rift started, under tension acting at right angles to the ridge, the two continents moved away from each other. Each color in this pattern represents several million years. New lavas pouring out from the interior of the Earth have resulted in younger geological material being found towards the central line and older material near the continents. If the drift had never occurred, the ocean floor would be as old as the continents, but in reality, the continents are 20 times as old as the ocean floor. What gigantic forces control the movement of these vast land masses over the face of our planet? The answer seems to be that all rocks contain a certain amount of radioactive material, uranium, thorium, potassium. And these generate heat, and in the course of time, the inside of the Earth becomes very hot and starts to move slowly as ice moves down a mountainside. It is solid, but capable of slight convection. By looking at a common kitchen process, the boiling of soup, we can see the movement of two types of surface, the soup that is boiling up, convecting, and the froth that is accumulating on top. Think of the froth as the continents, and the soup, where it's boiling up, as the ocean floor. New material comes up from inside the soup, while the froth stays on top and is moved around slowly. Where the currents rise and separate, they pull the surface rocks apart in tension. Small amounts of lava flow out and become imprinted with the Earth's magnetic field. Since the Earth doesn't get any bigger, this increase has to be taken up somewhere. In the deep trenches, the surface of the Earth is carried down by the currents back into the interior. The opening of the Atlantic Ocean can now be reconstructed. About 150 million years ago, when the Gulf of Mexico began to open, several continents were together. Then the South Atlantic opened up, and the Mediterranean was closed off. Still later continental drift formed what we now know as the North Atlantic. The picture of an Earth made up of fixed continents surrounded by oceans is only partial. We now know that the Earth's surface is divided into a number of plates, which include both land masses and ocean floors. It's along the margins of these plates, shown in black for ridges and red for trenches or former trenches, that expansion and contraction take place. Continental drift must appear as unreal as a dream that surfaces into the waking world only occasionally. But for those who study it, the Earth's crust in motion is a constant reminder of our dependence on our environment, not only for the life we have, but for whatever life our species may hope for.